America's money supply is shrinking right now. Signature Bank marks the third largest bank failure in U.S. history. Is the United States bracing itself for a domino effect of bank failures? This is a massive economic warning, and it's something that hasn't happened in more than 90 years. And guess what happened during the other times when our money supply contracted? We had the banking crisis of the 1870s, the panic of 1893, the depression of 1921, and the Great Depression of 1929. During each of these previous crashes, America faced the horrors of more than 10% unemployment and massive bank failures, which is what could be waiting for us in the very near future. And this is sending banks into panic mode. You know, in, in many respects, what we're living through today is a very traditional bank run. But the shrinking money supply is not the only sign that things are about to go from bad to worse. Years later, people are going to look back at this period and say, man, all the warning signs were there. How did we not see it coming? But you won't be one of those people because we're going to go over all the dire warning signs that are happening right now in this video. Stay dangerous and let's get into it. To continue making more money and leveling up, I have to be constantly reading books. But the problem is, not all books are created equal. Some books are way more important than others for you. And the way I think about it is that 20% of the books out there will give you 80% of the results you're looking for. So your job is to shift through as many books as possible to get to that 20%. Take this book for example, The Psychology of Money. I love reading money books, but a lot of them are repetitive. I don't want to invest time into reading this if it's not going to help me. So what I did instead is I first went through a summary of the book on an app called Shortform. And because of this summary, I found out that this book actually had a lot of stuff I had not learned yet. So then I bought the full book and read it. And one of the most important points I got from it is about how getting wealthy requires risk. However, once you have wealth, staying wealthy requires the exact opposite, paranoia, which no one ever talks about. And it was all thanks to Shortform. Shortform offers the best book summaries out there on over a thousand nonfiction books. And what's great is that their summaries aren't superficial. They're actually super in-depth. It's more of a book guide versus a book summary. And you'll find that the key insights you get from reading the actual book, you'll most likely find it in short form. And they even include cool side notes linking to other books that provide counter arguments. Like this note that referenced another book called Anti-Fragile by one of my favorite authors, Taleb. So I highly recommend giving Shortform a try. And if you use my link below right now, shortform.com slash Jake Tran, you'll get a free trial and $50 off the annual subscription, which is over three months free. That means for the price of one book a month, you'll get access to thousands of Shortform book guides. Pause the video and go to shortform.com slash Jake Tran with the link below now. Thanks to Shortform for sponsoring this video. Since the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, banks have stopped lending. They stopped giving out so many loans, which is really, really, really bad because the American economy is completely reliant on debt to keep growing. Just take a look at this graph. Whenever you see corporate debt go down just by a tiny bit, just a tiny bit, that's when the economy crashes and goes into a recession, as indicated by the gray areas. And it looks like this is what's happening right now as we speak. If you look at how the graph is starting to flatline right now, this is because banks aren't lending as much anymore. Quote, commercial bank lending dropped nearly $105 billion in the two weeks ended March 29, the most in Federal Reserve data back to 1973, end quote. And the loans that have seen the biggest drops are real estate loans, commercial loans, and industrial loans. This is because of two things. One, interest rates are almost as high as they were in 2008. So loans aren't as affordable anymore, so people are taking out less loans. But it's also because banks don't have that much money to lend out. Just take First Republic Bank for example. Right before they crashed, their deposits were down 36% compared to the year before. But their loans were still up by 23%, which meant that they were loaning out more money than people were depositing. So to save itself from collapsing like Silicon Valley Bank, First Republic Bank has to cut back on its loans to account for those fewer deposits. And First Republic Bank is not the only bank that is doing this. People all over America are moving their money into the big five banks like Chase because they're afraid of more bank runs, which is ironically making the smaller banks more vulnerable to bank runs. So these banks are cutting back on how many loans they give out, which means there are going to be fewer mortgages, business loans, credit, and less overall money available in the economy. Time. The Silicon Valley bank crisis, which saw the second biggest bank failure in U.S. history. Now, the U.S. government kind of stepped in to save the day and rescue the depositors there. So we didn't have you know crazy depression or uh, panic. But the problem is that that banking run and banking crisis for Silicon Valley Bank now scared all the other banks in the financial system. 
none of the other banks want to be the next bank that has a bank run. So that's causing the banks to get cautious and to cut back the lending that they're doing into the US economy. So my name is Nick. I run a YouTube channel called Reventure Consulting, where I cover all of these macroeconomic topics. I also have a focus on real estate. Additionally, I, I launched a website called Reventure app, www.reventure.app, which allows people who are interested in buying a house to look at the housing market data in their area and to figure out whether uh, home prices are going to go up or down into the future. You can see periods where the bank credit growth heavily decelerates like it is now or turns negative are associated with recessions, which are these gray bars. So when you see the gray bar, notice how, wow, bank credit growth goes down. Uh, that happened in the uh, mid, to, mid to late 2000s before the great financial crisis. That happened in 2000 before the dot com bust. That happened in the early 90s before the Gulf War recession. That happened in the late 70s and early 80s in the inflation recessions back then. So declining bank credit, what's going on right now, we're only at 2.7% growth year over year. That's one of the lowest levels we've seen in credit expansion since the data series started 50, 60 years ago, which basically means we're in a credit crunch. Banks are choking off liquidity from the economy because they don't wanna be the next Silicon Valley bank. Uh, instead of making the loan, they're keeping the money in cash on their balance sheet cracks are starting to form in the empire. And one of the first potential consequences of this are going to be the average middle class workers. This graph tracks total business and corporate debt in America over the last 70 years. And what do you see? I mean, it's gone up a lot. We have basically $20 trillion in business and corporate debt, which is fueling our economy, is fueling the employment. Where do people get the money? Where do the companies get the money to employ the people? from here, from this corporate debt. And so when uh, banks cut back lending, this corporate debt is invariably gonna start to go down. And what's scary is that it doesn't need to even go down by a lot to have big problems. I mean, take a look back at uh, the great financial crash, 08, 09, right? Worst recession since the Great Depression. Corporate debt peaked in 2008 at like 10 trillion. And then all it did was go, go from like 10.7 trillion down to 10 trillion. And that basically facilitated the worst recession and downturn we've seen in America in like 90 years. And so um, we're basically addicted to debt as a country to fuel our economy, particularly in the corporate sector. And if banks cut back lending more, we're going to see this corporate debt go down, which is going to mean businesses have to lay off workers and a lot of them are going to have to shut down. One of the first things a credit crunch affects is employment. If most of America's businesses run on debts, on taking out loans to buy inventory and pay employees, the minute these businesses can't get more loans to stay afloat, they're going to have to make some tough choices. One, they're going to have to lay off their least essential employees, or two, they can keep drawing on their deposits and their bank accounts, which is going to mean banks are going to have even less money to lend out, which is going to make the economy go down even more. Or three, they're going to have to take out risky loans at really, really high interest rates. But whatever the route they choose, the middle class will continue to be squeezed as they always have. And this isn't some way off dystopian future. It's already happening. Quote, U.S. factory activity contracted in March to its lowest level since May 2020 as measures of new orders and employment retreated, end quote. Well, you know, if you look at the headline unemployment rate, it's three and a half percent, which suggests a strong job market. So some people are kind of being maybe tricked into thinking the economy is healthy right now. But when you look at the leading indicators for the economy, like retail and consumer spending, that just dropped off huge in March. When you look at bank lending, banks are cutting back lending at the fastest rate in 15 to 20 years right now. That's going to be bad for the economy in the future, but it's going to mean businesses can't get loans and are going to have to lay off workers. When you look at Wall Street earnings reports, earnings and profits for Wall Street companies every single month now are going down. Uh, and we're going to have the biggest decline in Wall Street profits and earnings that we've had since the pandemic in the first quarter of 2023, which is going to mean, you know, Wall Street companies lose money or less profit, they're going to have to lay off workers. And so, you know, the leading indicators of the economy are suggesting problems in the economy ahead and that that 3.5% unemployment rate is not going to last for very long. And as more and more people get laid off, it will cause a bloodbath in the real estate markets. If you want to understand the real estate market, you have to understand that 58% of Americans already live paycheck to paycheck, while almost half of Americans have less than $1,000 saved. They are already teetering on the edge. So if and when they get laid off, they are going to be squeezed. The ones that own homes won't be able to pay their mortgage, and the ones that rent won't be able to afford their current rent. And well, you can imagine the rest. 
So debt to income ratio basically tells you how stressed the homeowner is in being able to afford their payments. And let's just uh, do an example. An affordable debt to income ratio would be 20 or 25%, meaning that the homeowner is only paying 20 to 25% of their income towards their debt payments each month. And you know, the general rule of thumb is like, if you're below 30%, you know, you're good. However, the problem is right now, the FHA debt to income ratio in mid 2022 is 45% for home buyers. And so they're on average paying 45% of their income on their debt costs. And that leaves very little wiggle room for things to go wrong, right? Like say their hours get cut or say they get laid off or say they don't get the raise they thought they were gonna get or say maybe their car breaks down and they need to fix their car, or buy a new car. There, there isn't the room there uh, for those extra expenses uh, and that increases the likelihood and odds that they end up defaulting on their mortgage and then eventually would be foreclosed on. So right now, uh, the US government gives first time home buyers these very risky loans to buy a house. They typically only need to put three to 5% down and they can borrow so much that they'd be paying over 50% of their income in mortgage interest and debt in a year. And uh, basically these loans now for FHA borrowers are riskier today uh, than they were at the peak of the previous bubble in 2008. So contrary to the conventional wisdom that all the loans in the housing market are good loans this time around, that's not true. There's a lot of risky loans, particularly in this FHA segment where lots of borrowers are actually already defaulting. You know, a scary statistic right now is that the FHA mortgage default rate is 12% right now. Over one out of every 10 FHA mortgages in America is already in default. And that's with an unemployment rate that's only 3.5%. So we're still at the lowest unemployment rate ever in US history right now. And yet we still have a lots, lots of defaults already going on. So what happens if the unemployment rate doubles in this recession? The FHA mortgage default rate with all these people with 3% down payments and paying 50% of their income to their mortgage, <laughs> they're going to go go more into default. And so that's the unfortunate situation that uh, the US government has set up for us here. And it's not just these first time homebuyer mortgages that are at risk. The debt to income ratio on normal mortgages are also probably equally as high. This would be the debt to income situation for all home purchase mortgages. Uh, including FHA, including Fannie Mae, including um, you know non-government backed, and you can see in the middle of 2022 we were at 38%. Now in the last couple quarters it's going to be even higher because mortgage rates came up, but Fannie Mae doesn't have that data yet. But we could see 38%. That's roughly equivalent to what it was in 07, 06. Uh, a little bit less, maybe it was a little bit less in 2020 when rates were lower. But you can see we're in the same ballpark, basically, in terms of home buyers across the entire mortgage market being stressed on their ability uh, to make their interest payments. America has kicked the can down the road for far too long. From the zero interest rates after 2008 to the insane money printing of COVID, every time we've postponed the pain, the bubble has just gotten bigger and bigger. So one of two things can happen. Either the government and the Fed find yet another way to kick the can down the road again, or the economy is in for a bloodbath. A bloodbath that those who are prepared will be able to profit from. All we can say is if you're not stacking cash right now, what on earth are you doing? And if you want to learn the most practical way to start stacking cash, the route that I recommend is getting a work from home job. Because think about it, as companies lay off people in droves to save money, they're still gonna need someone to get the job done. So who are they gonna turn to? They're gonna turn to remote workers that don't need expensive office space, that don't require a bunch of overhead. And by hiring more work from home positions, not only does the company save money, but you still make really good money working wherever you want, whenever you want. And before YouTube, this is actually the route I took. I landed a $40 per hour work from home job at only 19 years old without a degree and hardly any experience. And this work from home job changed everything for me. And I was able to land this work from home job without a degree and experience because of very specific strategies that I came up with to increase my odds of getting hired, even though there were definitely other candidates out there that were way more qualified than me. And I put all my findings and all my strategies into our new masterclass called Exploit the System. Exploit the System is the best masterclass out there on how to land a work from home job as fast as possible even if you don't have a degree or experience where I walk you through step by step on exactly what to do over the course of 90 plus premium video lessons. 
This course is a perfect fit for you if you want to make money online, but you also don't want to slave away 12 hours a day trying to build a business from scratch. Or this course is also for you if you want to start a business, but you still want a flexible way to make money while you build your business on the side, which is what I did. And how do I know this course actually works? Because it's worth for our students. And if you want to learn more and hear what they have to say, click the square on the screen to watch our free video on this masterclass right now. Click the square on the screen to watch now.